Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Tomal. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk about my experience uh, using Helm 2 and like the problems I've, I've sort of faced, and and hopefully some of the feedback can be into, uh, you know used in the Helm 3 design discussion. So originally, I got introduced to Helm because I was trying to uh, get a history of what. So we, we were like a bunch of people working on a Kubernetes cluster, and we wanted to know like who is deploying what. So we, uh, so I found Helm after doing some uh, Google search. The first thing we noticed that it didn't have any kind of RBAC or anything. So that was back in November 2016. So we started working with Matt to see if we can like con uh, convert that gRPC server into a uh, CRD controller. So that uh, well, it was called a third-party object or CRD uh, TPR at that time. But so that you can have RBAC and restrict people from making changes. Uh, but you know, after like uh, doing a prototype and sort of talking to the people who are working on the RBAC, which is Ligit from the Red Hat team, it became clear that uh, you know, using like a controller approach, you cannot really achieve the authorization requirements that Tiller needs. So you can go back to this issue and actually uh, learn about the details. So then uh, we started to uh, look into, uh, you know, if we could introduce Tiller, like authentication and auth authorization to Tiller directly. So there was like a lot of, you know, discussion and sort of design around that, but you know, it's still, that, that st issue is still open. Uh, you can go look at that issue number, like 1918. So off late, I'm just, uh, you know, uh, mostly like develop a bunch of charts for various tools that my company builds. And then uh, we also have like a, uh, HTTP JSON proxy for Tiller, uh, which is called Swift. So that's what I'm doing. So, so in my experience, so Helm sort of falls short. So I like to think it from like a, two different personas. One is the package consumer, and then one is the package author or publisher. So Helm is great if you want to try somebody else's application, like you have a new cluster, just you know do Helm install, and you have something running. But like if you are trying to use it for internal applications, like you have to do a lot of things. Right? Like maybe you have a deployment and a service file, but now you have to create like a values file, you have to do like a app. It's just a lot of things you have to know and learn and like it's a whole new different tool set. And then like, you know, from yesterday's talks, it's become clear that you have to sort of effectively reinvent the whole developer workflow around like, you know, now you have to build charts, push charts, and like it just, and then also you have now multiple, you know, sources of truth, right? Like it's not enough to look at your Git repo, you also have to go and see like who actually released stuff from the Helm release, and like you can actually go and do like a Tiller, like Helm rollback, ch make changes to the cluster directly. And then because Tiller is still to the day, do doesn't have authentication, so you don't really know who has pushed that change. You know, if it's multiple people across defined time zones, it's, it's actually a real problem. Uh, and then uh, if you have complex workflows, like uh, for example, you know, CRD controllers are very popular these days. So you deploy a controller, you wait for that controller to register the CRD object, then you want to create the actual CRD object. That kind of thing is actually hard, right? Like if you go to the Helm uh, repo, there is like issue open for this kind of use cases. And then like what about your release history? Right now it's in config maps or you can store in, uh, in secrets, but are you really storing that? Like how do you are backing that up? And then, frankly, who enjoys YAML with Go templates? I don't know. I mean, you know, thank God, like Helm template exists, but it's, it's not really fun when something doesn't work, especially with indentation errors. Uh, and then for our chart publishers, so this is mostly my experience trying to publish like stable charts. Like one of the biggest uh, problem that I have is that the chart version is not same as your app version, right? So you build a controller, it has its own versioning, but then user goes and deploys your chart, and that chart shows like a different version, and you don't know what is that, right? Like it doesn't make any sense. And then uh, obviously the stable charts review process is like very slow, unpredictable, right? You release a, you know, it happens often. Like you push a new version of your tool to GitHub release, but then you don't know when that chart is going to get pushed because then people have to like, okay, no, no, don't use the stable chart. Use the chart from my app repo because it's not updated and like it's just always a thing. And then. And then the stable chart repo, the, the style guide is getting better, but uh, that also means it constantly gets like, up changed. Like, I mean, how many times the truncation length has changed, right? Yeah. So, so I started thinking like if we could do something simple, right? 
And when I mean simple, it's like simple to get started, right? Like I just want to do kubectl apply because TLR at the end of the day, is just like a glorified kubectl apply and then it has a history of what is really applied that's the, in the config map. Then simple to learn, like I don't want to learn like another whole new family of tool chains and then want to share that my charts because if eventually everybody forks their charts because it, you know, everybody needs something different. And then even inside your organization, you probably want to branch and fork because you have different clusters, different environments. And then like able, you know, and flexible enough to handle like complex deployments. And obviously I don't want another source of truth or record, right? I mean, and, and obviously like another system to secure. I mean, this was from Lucky's presentation yesterday, but you know, sorry, but this is not simple, right? Like how many of us actually fully understand what those links mean and like what happens when those, some of the links change? Because you know, you can use any managed Kubernetes service, but every few months you, or you have to upgrade your various components and then like, you know, things always change and you, you need to know what's going on. And then frankly, we don't need to reinvent Git, right? Like Helm is sort of fighting with what Git already does, right? Like Helm install is sort of, you know, if you do git ops, is like git commit, git push. Like Helm, git reward is like Helm, you know, rollback. And then I felt like, you know, we have done this before, right? Like especially you are doing Go development. I mean, my experience with doing Go development or some Node.js development, like Glide, Dev, those kind of tools exist. And like, can we do something simpler from those respects? So I started thinking about this sort of idea, like, you know, what if, if you start, like, develop your own application, you just have a bunch of VMLs, right? Maybe a deployment, a service, maybe a few secrets. So you do kubectl, uh, kube control apply, you are good to go. Then someday maybe you want to share that chart with somebody else. So what do you do? You effectively write, like, a manifest YAML. It's sort of similar to how package.json in Node.js or, like, Glide YAML, right? So you say, okay, this is my package name, you give it an like identifier, which is a package, and then you can have the owner information or whatever you want to write. Then like somebody else wants to use that, like why don't you just do a glide or dev type tools DAO, right? Like you have a dependency and you can say, okay, I want to pull in that other package that I want to depend on. Maybe you want to depend on the Nginx controller, the Nginx controller or some other like Prometheus or something, right? So you pull in that and then you run like a dep command, so it sort of vendors in all that YAML files from those repos. So effectively, you know, I think like you could do something like that. Like if there was like a tool, like say pack dep, you pull in all the dependencies, then you can effectively edit the vendors uh, files, which is like creating the overlay or what is called like a patch files. And then you can run pack up, so compile those files into like the final YAML that you want to deploy and then you just do kubectl apply. And once you do that, like there is no server seven component and the person who is doing that apply is actually his RBAC or his or her RBAC who is going to go apply directly. So there is no you know, chance of something like this uh, having like a privilege escalation type attacks. And then if you want to do like a cube blame type thing, right? Like I want to know who actually did the deploy. So Kubernetes now supports like a advanced audit logging. So when you do cube up, so the packet up, you can effectively apply the you know, commit tag on those objects, right, as an annotation. And then if you collect the logs, in the logs, in the, the, the Kubernetes audit logs, you can actually tell like who made the change or that, that did the deployment, right? So, you, you know, and that's, that sort of kind of works quite nicely. I mean, there are some limitations of this approach today, but I believe the audit logs is going to, you know, solve all the problems. And then, you know, the other nice thing is if you work from a Git repo first, like, you know, if there you have a disaster or some sort of situation, you actually have your whole cluster state in a Git repo so you can sort of recreate it from there. You don't have to like, you know, go to some other tool to do that. So we have been sort of, you know, working on this idea. Uh, I put a uh, tool on this website called kubepack.com. You can go and try it and, you know, talk to me about it if you have any feed feedback and would love to hear more about you from you. And uh, yeah, so there are some additional readings if you want to do, I'll share this uh, presentation. Like there's been some discussion even in the Kubernetes uh, main uh, cube uh, uh, working groups, so you can you'll be interested to know more. Thank you.